Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be taking a contrarian look at the MMA card for tomorrow uh, for, from a betting perspective. And I started thinking about something yesterday. There is a really, really good account you should follow on Twitter. His, his name is Sports, I think, underscore projection or Sports uh, uh, dash projections, I forget. I had him on my screen a couple of, couple of months ago. He was doing a he was doing a uh, a podcast with someone else. I think it was G Pants thirteen or something. I get these names confused. And what they were talking about is is what type of content they like to create in general. And and I forget which one of them said this, but one of them said that they they prefer to not create content on kind of a recurring daily basis. That is specifically. I guess, tailored to what's going on in front of them. In other words, your typical, either like picks video or recommendation video. Um, he was saying that he prefers to do kind of evergreen content, or meaning that content that people could just go back to, you know, uh, that is that is very, uh, I don't want to say general, because that has a connotation of being a little weak, but just more content that can apply to not what's just in front of you, but out there in the future. And I thought about that from the perspective of these videos. And I think what I'm really accomplishing here, if I'm doing my job, is sort of a blend, right? We're, we're, we're using a slate that's in front of us to teach lessons that I think should translate beyond this slate. Um, and with respect to the betting breakdown, for those of you guys, for those of you that don't know, I mean, our concept is not trying to figure out which is the most likely thing to happen. Uh, what we're trying to figure out is where the public is, uh, where the narrative is, what has been agreed upon by this, you know, MMA Twitter group think as being that which is the most likely occurrence and making the presumption that that occurrence by its very nature is overvalued, you know, because the way UFC and MMA works is it's weird for a, a contest, which is, Kind of ripe with chaos, you know, two people coming after each other, killing each other. There, people really get into the weeds to such a degree that they rely on a very binary outcome. They will assume that either A wins this way or B wins that way. And throughout the course of the week, people, because they're human beings, they start to agree with one another and, and say, oh, that's, that's probably right. That's probably right. And at the end of the week, you have for most fights, an agreed upon binary decision. It's either going to be X in this way or Y that way. And that's just not the way life works. And it's not the way uh, a sport like MMA works. So what we are attempting to do is not outthink the public, excuse me, not outthink the, the, the line. We're not trying to figure out exactly what's going to happen. What we're doing is gauging what everybody else has agreed upon is going to happen and taking that very, very logical leap that that particular outcome is the, is, is, is overvalued. And the reality then is if that particular thing is overvalued then almost everything else is going to be undervalued. Now it's not exactly that simple because there's a big involved, you know, <laughs> like we're dealing with like a minus 120, minus 130 big on both sides sometimes and when you're playing kind of the more outlandish props, it could be even worse. So you got to be really right about this. In other words, you know, unless you are really a tremendous odd shopper, you know, you've got to really be right that, you know, that, that a particular thing is overvalued or undervalued. And what I have found in my betting career, whether it be on MMA or sports or stock market or anything like that, where you have to, uh, you know, account uh, for some kind of transaction fee or transaction cost, and you're fighting against a line that's been, you know, uh, compiled by millions and millions, in some cases, billions of dollars worth of action, uh, you have a better chance, in my opinion, of being able to gauge the psychology and the narratives that go into the line than you are just being an, an analyst that out analyzes everybody else. So that's the way we approach this. And this is you know, obviously, this is a this was a much longer intro to what people are probably getting after is what I'm what I'm betting this week. Um, but again, the purpose of these videos is not just to show you what I'm betting and what to I think are good bets this week, 
but more how to think about markets and how to think about situations like this. Um, and with any luck, it'll translate to the way you invest or, or, or handicap other things. So with that said, let's go over the rules here. Uh, we are going to be betting one thing on every single fight on the card, and that's not, obviously not the greatest money management system in the world, but we don't care. Uh, we are also going to be betting one unit on every fight on the card. And uh, of course, that's not the greatest money management system in the world. And we don't care about that either. And again, for transparency, uh, a unit for me is $180. And I do think it's healthy for, for content providers to be as transparent as possible with what they're betting. I know people like to, like to you know, talk in terms of units, um, both for privacy and also because Yes, the reality is some of you out there have bet less than $180 a fight. Some of you bet 18, bet more, you know. So, yes, it does mean something different to everybody. But I think it's important to know, you know, what, what the actual money that's on the line is. Um, the other thing, the other rule is that there's a 13 fight card. So we are going to presume, since we're being contrarian, although it's, it's not exactly, that's not exactly the right presumption. But because we're being contrarian, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean we're betting all underdogs. But we're going to presume for the fun of this that the first 12 fights we're going to lose. And in the main event, we always want to pick something then that will get all our money back. So we are going to promise that in the main event, we're going to bet you something that is going to be 12 to one or higher. Okay. And the other thing is you will see me put the bets in right now. Um, presuming the zoom lets me, if not, they will be put in just after we, after I log off. Anyway, all right, so uh, first fight of the night, we have Thomas Peterson versus Jamal Pogues. Um, and one other thing I should mention is the reason why we wait till the end of the week to do this is because the more information I have on what everybody likes, the better, because I know what the narrative is and what there is to fade. So in this particular fight, we have Thomas Peterson against Jamal Pogues, sloppy heavyweight fight. And what people are pretty much on in agreement uh, with is that Thomas Peters is going to be going for a lot of takedowns. He did that on the regional scene, and Jamal Pogues is not exactly the greatest with his takedown defense, although he's actually had a you know a wrestling result as well. But Thomas Peterson, if he gets you know what, what he wants, he's going to you know take Pogues down and either submit him or get him to ground and pound. Essentially, that's basically Thomas Peterson's uh, path to victory. So side A right is. Peterson by sub, right? Or Peterson by, by KO could be a ground and pound as well, but certainly Peterson by sub or by KO. And then the other side of this, you're getting the majority of the people that are playing Pogues and you are getting some people playing Pogues is that he's probably going to survive and win a striking based fat battle or something like that. So the binary outcomes here is you're either supposed to be able to bet either Pogues by decision or Peterson by uh, probably inside the distance or, or, you know, more specifically sub. But so what that means is that those are the things you're not allowed to bet. Okay. Those are the things that are probably most likely to occur, but are just been agreed upon by way too many people. So what we have to do here is figure out what else we want to do. So the real contrarian approach is to either play Peterson by decision or maybe Pogues inside the distance. Um, and I honestly don't think either one is particularly better than the other. So let's just take a look at these prices and see what we have here. Peterson by decision is plus 300. I mean, it's certainly reasonable. And we'll take a look at, at Pogues inside the distance. So Pogues inside the distance is going to be plus 500. All right. So you know what? As, as my good... Uh, friend i'm not really friends with him but as my good friend as they like to say in twitter uh lubetia says uh plus 500 is more than plus 300 so we're going to take jamal pogues inside the distance plus 500 for one week. okay uh let's move on to the next fight we have landon quinones uh versus uh uh markel Maderos. And this one, unfortunately, I mean, you've had just an incredible public swamping onto one side of this, and that would be on the Landon Quinonez side. Um, he, uh, you know, he fought in the Contender Series, had a really good performance. He did some jiu-jitsu tournaments as well, and um, in in the UFC, he came in on short notice and fought a real gutsy fight against uh, uh, Hackbarast. Um, 
And just all the money has been coming in on Quinones. He's one of the probably the most popular runner draw on the slate. So we, we really just can't play. The thing is, is that we, is that it hasn't really been agreed upon how this fight is going to go. You know, I've heard some people think that it could be a brawl. Some people think it could be a technical based fight. The only side of this that you can really bet and be even remotely contrarian is just taking the Maderos and laying the, the 142. And again, Sometimes being contrarian means putting a favorite. And I really, if, if you've looked at, let's just say you pulled 50 Twitter handicappers or whatever, I think you're getting less than 10% of the people that are going to take Madero's and lay the 142. So that's what we're going to do. So Madero's minus 142, straight up like that for 180. All right. This next fight is one that that I think is pretty instructive. Okay. Julia Stolyarenko versus Luana Karolina. So this is this is one of the most lopsided uh, narrative Twitter sphere groupthink results I've seen in the UFC in a while. And this is the deal: Julia Stolyarenko, if she wins, is going to win in the first round by submission. Period. And the reason for that is because, well, every one of her fights that she's won pretty much has been won in the first round by submission, specifically by armbar. So this is what has been agreed upon by the entire United States of America, the, you know, the, uh, what you call it, the uh, surrounding territories and the entire Euro community as well. So what you cannot do, I promise you, in this fight is play Stolyarenko by sub. It is just, it, it, I, I, can't, I can't promise you it's not going to happen because it's pretty likely to happen, but I do promise you that it is over about. You just can't bet it and, and be contrarian. You can't bet it and be getting a good price. It's just not possible. Everybody is agreeing that it's going to happen. Okay. Um, and on the other side of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the board here, interestingly, even though Carolina is like only plus 124, I haven't seen anybody take her. I mean, really. Uh, so uh, th there's there's only a couple of things you could do here. You could play Stolyarenko by decision, and that would be pretty, pretty cool. Um, or you could just play anything with Carolina. Now, if you were really, if you're really nasty, you play Carolina inside the distance. But I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I have that in me. Um, so let's take a look. Let's see Stolyarenko by decision. What does that look like? That's plus 450. I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> let's put it that way. Um, Stolyarenko by decision is plus 450. That's, that's pretty interesting. Or you could play probably Luana Carolina inside the distance plus like a thousand. Um, Boy, oh boy, I part of me really wants to do that, by the way, to play Carolina up inside the distance, but I just can't. I just don't see it. So for me, it's either going to be Carolina just plus the 124 um, or Stolyarenko by decision. Um, Let's try to visualize. At the end of the fight, what's going to happen? You could be interviewing Julius Stolyarenko. And she can say, well, you know, people told me I was a one-trick pony, that I could only win by armbar, but I proved that I could win a three-round fight. That's possible. Or they could be interviewing Luana Carolina and say, yeah, I don't know why people keep doubting me. I just keep getting the job done, whatever it is. So we're, we're going to actually go with that. So we're going to take Luana Carolina plus the 124 for winning. All right. Um, but I think either of those are pretty, pretty, pretty good contrarian approaches. All right, uh, where are we? Jung Young Lee versus Blake Builder. All right, so this was a little subtle. All right, it took a little while before everybody kind of agreed, but eventually they did. And what they agreed upon was this. Blake Builder is there to be hit. Now these are, you're going to be throwing a whole bunch of platitudes at you. And this is what MMA is about. It's about platitudes and narratives. Builder is very hittable, but he's a dog. All right. So what that means, typically, is that 
he's probably going to lose round one and come back in the later rounds. That's what that's what people that are hittable that are dogs do. So that's where people are going. They're playing either builder late or Jung Young Lee early, right? Because they're also they have the thing about Jung Young Lee being having suspect cardio. So these are what people are agreed upon. If it's either if Jung Young Lee early or Blake Builder late. So those are the things you can't play. What you can do, you can either, once again, you can play Jung Young Lee maybe by decision or maybe Blake Builder early. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. The thing is, if you play Blake Builder just inside the distance, then you're getting a little bit of that round two, round three vig that people are kind of playing. The only way you can really play Blake Builder inside is literally you play him round one. Okay, that's going to be really really dirty you know if you can actually pull that off it's probably going to be 10 to 1 odds but we'll pull that up in a minute or you can play jung young lee by decision right because blake builder's got that dog in him and and and, and jung young lee with the, with the bad cardio so let's take a look and see what these are jung young lee plus 275 or you could play blake builder in round one wow at Plus 650? Boy. Um, I think either of those are pretty good, honestly. Blake build around one plus 650. Who's playing that? I don't think anybody's playing either of the sides I just mentioned, so I, I really don't know which one to tell you. Um, let's... You know, because the Blake Builder one just feels like so uncomfortable, we'll we'll go with that one. Okay, Blake Builder round one plus six fifty. That has no chance. Slow starter there to be hit, but we'll see. Uh, so Blake Builder round one plus one plus six fifty. All right, moving on. We have uh, Themba Garimbo versus Pete Rodriguez. Easy extremely easy to handicap. Uh, Fenba Garimbo, big time grappler. And Pete Rodriguez, not exactly a great with the, with the grappling defense, but Pete Rodriguez does have a first round K. So Pete Rodriguez, first, I have heard both sides of this mentioned. Okay. Uh, and the idea is that Pete Rodriguez, if he wins, it's going to be a first round KO or he's gonna, just going to get taken down and, and that'll be the end of it. Uh, and Thiemba Garimbo, him by sub, certainly makes a lot of sense. Okay, So those are the things you just can't play. So Garimba by sub is going to be overvalued. And Pete Rodriguez, believe it or not, by KO is also going to be overvalued. So the, really the only thing you could actually attack here is you could play Garimbo by decision or Rodriguez by uh, uh, or Rodriguez by decision, actually. Or you could play Garimbo by you know, by KO if you wanted to try that, but I just don't see that as a path. So let's take a look at some of these odds. Um, first of all, P. Rodriguez by decision is going to be a million to one. Let's take a look at it. That's going to be plus 14 to one. I mean, it's never been out of the first round, or the first two rounds. That'd be pretty nasty if you pull it off. Grimba by decision plus 450. That almost seems soup too easy. Yeah, let's do it. Let's let's go to Garimba by decision. You know, we probably could do. We could just bet the fight to go to the distance. You know what I mean? This way, you don't have to worry about. Yeah, let's just play play the whole fight to go to the distance plus three twenty. This way, just in case you get that weird outlier of Rodriguez winning by decision, you're covered. So we're gonna do that. Garimba Gar uh, Garcia. Um, whatever his name is, Rodriguez to decision, plus 320. Azat Maxim versus Charles Johnson. So Charles Johnson, one thing that everybody's sure about the Charles Johnson fight is that he's just going to get taken down, okay? He can get taken down and taken down and taken down again. And then you have Azat Maxim, who all he does is take people down. And it's a tailor-made matchup. And styles make fights. I'm going to 
continue to hurl these platitudes at you. And not only that, that's not bad enough. Okay. In his last fight, although Maxim was expect, you know, had was supposedly going to take down his opponent there, he didn't. And the reason why is because Tyson Nam, they say, has incredible elite uh, takedown defense. So they also have built in an excuse for why he didn't do what he was supposed to do in his last fight. So this one, they gave him some with no takedown defense. And I also heard that the UFC does not like Charles Johnson because he's low volume. And they're just going to give uh, Moxham a perfectly easy matchup. Anybody's betting Charles Johnson here is out of their minds. So that's what we're going to do. Charles Johnson, plus 190, 418. All right. Molly McCann versus Diana Belbita. Um, this was tough. You know, they fought each other before, and Molly McCann beat her 30 to 25. Um, and, and Belbita was threatening to retire, I think recently, but she took this comeback fight. And one thing about people that are about to go into retirement is, um, is they're already kind of checked out. So I can't see any reason why McCann would, would, would lose, would, uh, would, would lose here. So typically that would lead me to believe that we're just supposed to take Belbita um, but there's another thing going on here. There's also the public doesn't really like Molly McCann too much anymore. She just got finished twice in a row by, by Stolyarenko and by Blanchfield. Um, and I don't know, this one is actually really tough. One thing I have heard is that Molly McCann is, may not be able to finish her, but this is really, really nasty. This we're really going to be throwing money away with this one, but we're just going to just for lack of anything else, we're just going to take Belbita plus whatever the three hundred is that what it is? The animal Belbita plus one two ten. I haven't heard anybody actually taking this, so let's let's we'll live with that. Belbita plus two ten for one eighty. But this is, I hate to say this, but this is probably the worst. Um, but then again, I mean, there, there's contrarian with respect to the fact that no one's taken her even with the plus 210. I mean, it's not like she's plus 400. She's plus only 210, and yet, you know, still no, you know what I mean? So you'd think nobody's taking her, but someone obviously is putting some money on this. So I don't know. This was probably an atrocious bet, but, but we're doing it. Um, okay. Gilbert Urbina versus Charles Radke. So Charles Radke in his last fight came in and basically got booed off out of the octagon. Um, he was supposed to just destroy Blood Blood Diamond, and he, uh, uh, he was supposed to destroy Blood Diamond, and instead he basically laid against him the whole fight, and he got booed, and then he cursed the crowd. Right? Um, Gilbert Urbina in his last fight, he fought uh, Orion Pasky and looked really good. So you would think that at the beginning, okay, so let's just go take Radke because Radke's coming off of a miserable performance. Probably going to be overvalued, undervalued here. And Urbina's coming off of, uh, whatever, a really good performance. But what's weird is that it's not actually been like that in the in the betting streets. All I'm hearing from Urbina is that his 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 result was kind of fraud fraudulent because Koski was essentially just dead. I mean, he was, he was either sick or hurt or whatever. And then Urbina, they're going back to his other fights and explaining why he's really not that good. And Radke, they're going back to his old fights, saying he's got a lot of power and things like that. They're completely forgetting about his last fight. So in a weird way, I think Radke's getting all kinds of new new uh, underdog love here. So we're just going to take kind of like the what could have been the square play on Monday has now become kind of the, the anti-square play on on. Friday, which is just going to be Urbina inside the distance. So let's just go do that. Uh, Urbina winning method inside the distance plus the 120. We'll just be done with it. All right. Uh, moving on, we have Kizriev versus Muradov. Um, so Kizriev is 100 and 0. He's a Russian. He 
goes for a million takedowns. And the reality is, unfortunately, we're not doing the parlay. Um, the reality is, is that Muradov's only plus 124. I, I don't understand this at all. Um, so we're just going to presume that there's something going on here and just take Muradov plus the 124. Um, again, not the most contrarian take, but this is... I mean, I've just seen this kind of thing happen too often. I'm not playing murder up by K or anything like that. This has got to be an atrocious. Again, the only reason I I bet this, you know, a couple of these because I did say I was going to bet everything. I am going to go back and just go over what I think is actually, you know, indicative of a good contrarian play. Here, we're just forcing it in 13 fights, um, and I think this one is one of the forces in Murdoch. All right. Um, Vivian Arujo versus Natalia Silva. I mean, it's, Silva's faster. She is uh, quicker. She's younger. Uh, Arajo has, has lost like the last like four fights or something like that. The only thing, though, I mean, there's no thing. I mean, there's just no one that's taking Arujo here. Even plus the 280, we just kind of have to do it, right? The only thing I will say is that Silva in her last fight didn't, I mean, didn't finish the opponent. So maybe there's a little value in, nah, there's just nothing. The only value there is here is in, is in Arujo. Um, so we're just going to do it. Plus the 180. Silva's the new shiny toy. I mean, no, no one is taking Arujo here, so we're just going to do it. All right, we have uh, just a couple of more here, right? Uh, and then we're going to get to the main event where we have to get all our money back from these last couple of atrocious picks. Randy Brown versus Muslim Salikov. Um, all right, so Randy Brown, again, is the younger fighter, and Muslim Salikov is, you know, uh, he's not only is he 39, but he's kind of an old 39. And the way this fight is just going to go is that Randy Brown is just going to piece him up on the feet and win a decision, right? What I'm not getting any of is Randy Brown actually being able to finish this guy. Um, so that's what we're going to try here. We're going we're gonna to try something with Randy Brown inside the distance. Let's take a look at some of these methods here. Just inside the distance alone is plus 180. I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, let's see if we there's anything really funny. I mean, you could play Randy Brown by submission plus 350, or beat TKO. I don't think it's much of a difference there. So we're just going to play Randy Brown inside the distance plus the 180. Hey, for 180. Like. All right. We have Renato Moicano versus Drew Dober. This is, again, like a fight which everybody is in agreement with what's going to happen here. Moicano is going to be able to dominate on the ground. So he's going to try to get Dober to the ground and submit him, okay? Uh, so he's either going to get that done, or at the very worst, it's going to go to, you know, maybe uh, maybe to a decision, but very unlikely. And Drew Dober, if he gets the win, it's going to be by KO. So what can you not bet? You cannot bet Moicano by sub, and you cannot bet Dober by KO. All you can bet here is either uh, you can bet some Moicano by decision if you want, or Dober by decision, or you could just bet the fight to go the distance. Um, so let's just take a look at those odds. All right, uh, fight to go to the distance would be, where is that? Fight lines? No, just popular. It would be, Oh, just to go the distance. Go the distance plus 250. I mean, that's that's not bad. I don't think people are playing this. And I don't listen, I don't have to pick which one. I like it. So Dober, Moicano, go the distance, plus the 180, plus 250. All right. So let's talk about all of the uh terrible plays that we've made so far. 
and then we will get back to the main event. And let's kind of review what I think is actually not bad. So post by KO is by submission. That's actually not bad. That is pretty contrarian. I actually like that one. Madero's minus 142. I like that. That's contrarian. Everybody's on the Canonia side. Carolina plus 124. I like that one as well. Build around one. That's that's pretty neat. Uh, I like that one as well. Garimbo Rodriguez. That's not bad. Charles Johnson. I like this one. The plus the 190. No one's expecting this. Delbita feels like a force, honestly. Or being inside, I like that one. Murada feels like a force. Arahu, I guess, feels like a force. Um, Randy Brown, uh, this one isn't bad, plus 180, uh, inside the distance. Uh, and this what next one, Moicano Dober to go the distance, that's plus 250. That, that's contrarian as well. Now, I don't mean that I like them as far as you know their ability to come in. All these things are obviously atrocious plays because they're the least likely thing to happen. Okay. Um, so we are going to have to try something in this last fight to try to get our money back. And the good thing is, is that the, well, the bad thing is it's going to be tough to find something that's 13 to one, but the good thing is, is that everybody's pretty clear about what's going to happen. Right. Uh, most of the finish upside is going to be with Delice. Um, he's much more dangerous. Uh, he has much less volume. And if Imavov wins, it's going to be probably a nice point-based decision over five rounds. So those are the two results that you can't play. You can't play Delice inside, and you can't play Imavov by decision. So the only thing you can really do is play Delice by decision or something with Imavov with a finish. And unfortunately, Delice by decision is just not going to be 13 to 1. Right? Uh, let's confirm that. Not bad. Plus 700. That's not terrible, actually. But no, we're going to have to try something with Imavov. Um, uh, and unfortunately, even just to bet him by KO or even by submission is not 13 to 1. So we're going to have to take a shot with an actual round here. So we're going to have to take either a round and a result or just a round. Well, Let's just take a look at the round props first. Uh, so any of these late ones are going to work. So Imavov round four, I think that's pretty reasonable. I think that makes sense. Or the other thing I could do is I could just play, I could play him earlier by submission. Hopefully maybe he goes for the takedown and gets a submission. Let's see what that looks like. Winning method. Um, Imavov by submission. I want the actual round here, actually. Where is it? Fight props? Round props? I had it. Let's see. Oh, there it is. So Imavov by well, TKO round round. Mm, this isn't bad. TKO or KO in round three. That's not terrible. How about Imavov by submission in round two at plus 2,200? Uh, that doesn't feel so hot. I think we're just going to go back to that round prop. Imavov round four plus 1400. All right. I think this can make some sense. So again, it's important to know what we've accomplished here. Uh, we haven't really broken down the fights and we haven't really made predictions on what we think is going to happen. We didn't really even bet anything that we think is likely to happen. All we did was, was X out those bets that are just hopelessly overvalued and then pick something that at least seemed reasonable enough with the presumption that you're getting decent value over here. So uh, there you go. 180 times 13. We're going to accept the odds changes. Let's see. I know they can't be parlayed. I don't want to parlay. 13 bets for 2340. Let's see if it can, I can play this right now. 
it's going to make me log off first. Okay, uh, that'll do it. I know this was kind of all over the place today, but hopefully you got my point. And listen, if you tail any of this, again, I don't even encourage you to do that. Um, it's just hopefully you learn at least the process of how to analyze markets. Hopefully that helps and uh, have fun.